Now that we discussed what a nuclear fusion reaction actually is, let's take a look at the following example that actually deals with calculating how much energy is released in a certain type of nuclear fusion reaction. So the natural abundance of deuterium in water is about 0.0115% on average. Calculate how much energy can be harvested in the nuclear fusion reaction of 10 kilograms of water. And the specific nuclear fusion reaction that we are considering is shown in the following box. So we have two individual deuterium atoms basically fuse or combine to form the tritium as well as the hydrogen atom. So I broke down this example into four steps. Let's begin with step one. So how many deuterium atoms are available in 10 kilograms of water? To calculate this, we begin by converting the amount of water into grams. So we multiply 10 kilograms by 1000 and we divide that by the molecular mass of water. So 18 grams of H2O per mole. And this gives us how many moles of water we have in 10 kilograms of water. So now we must actually determine the number of molecules of water in this many moles by multiplying this by Avogadro's number. So this gives us the number of molecules of water we have in 10 kilograms of water. So, but we are not actually interested in the water. We are interested in our hydrogen atoms and a single water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms. So we multiply this by two and this gives us the total number of hydrogen atoms in 10 kilograms of water. And finally, because we know that the natural abundance of deuterium is 0.0115%, we take this, divide that by 100 to convert into the fraction and multiply this by our 0.000115 fractional abundance. This gives us about 7.69478 times 10 to 22 deuterium atoms are found in 10 kilograms of water. So now let's move on to step two and calculate how much energy is released in a single fusion reaction of our two deuteriums. So to calculate the energy that is released, we have to calculate the decrease in mass as we go from the reactants to the product side. So the mass of a single deuterium is given by this. The mass of our tritium is given by this. The mass of our hydrogen is given by this. So we multiply the mass of one individual deuterium by two. This gives the total mass of the reactants and we subtract the total mass of the products and we get about 0.00429 unified atomic mass units. This is by how much the mass decreases when we go from the reactants to the product. And this conversion, this mass basically converts or transforms into energy. So to calculate how much energy this corresponds to, we use the rest mass energy equation. So E equals delta M times C squared. Now the mass must be given in kilograms. So we basically take this and convert it into kilograms by multiplying it by the conversion factor and then multiply that delta M by the square of the speed of light in a vacuum, this quantity, and we get about 6.4111905 times 10 to negative 13 joules. This is how much energy is released in a single reaction shown above.
stuff. The question is, how many such reactions actually take place in the 10 kilograms of water? So since two deuteriums are required for one fusion reaction, we have one, two deuteriums. That means we take the number of total atoms, divide that by two, and that gives us this many fusion reactions. And now in step four to calculate the total amount of energy released in the 10 kilograms of water that undergoes fusion, we take this quantity and multiply by the amount of energy released in a single fusion reaction and we get the total amount of energy released in the fusion of 10 kilograms of water is about 2.47 times 10 to the 10 joules of energy. So this is a relatively large amount of energy. So we see if we can actually somehow build a nuclear fusion reactor that uses this type of reaction, we can harvest a large amount of energy to power different types of things. For example, we can use it to power cities or large buildings and structures.